Hey there, artist Caleb here. Let's take a fast look at Among the Sleep. Among the Sleep is a very unique first-person horror game. If your computer can handle it, I'd highly recommend going into options and setting the uh, video settings at max, because it is a really pretty game. The control scheme is pretty simple, and I like simple. Right from the get-go, the developers really surprised me with some outside-the-box game design. It's really, really imaginative. And you nearly always have some degree of control. So this is me moving the, the mouse around a little bit. Hey, sweetie. Did you finish your drink already? Oh, careful. It might break. Oh, look at you. You're so adorable in your tiny-footed pajamas. We play as a two-year-old child, and they did such a good job at making us feel Happy like one. Happy birthday, sweetie. Here it comes. Through the tunnel. Choo-choo. <gasps> Ignore that knocking. Fork over that cake, lady. Uh, I'll be... Mm, right back. We start to get a sense that something's terribly wrong. Just not sure what yet. What are you doing? They touch on just the right notes for... Uh, build-up and storytelling. Look what I found. I wonder what it is. Why don't we go upstairs and find out? Oh my, how much cake did you have? Like one freaking bite. Mm -hmm. I really love how they introduce the title sequence. It's just in keeping with everything brilliant that they've done so far. They even managed to utilize it for a sense of disquiet for the things to come. Now let's see what's inside. Maybe it's a new toy. <laughs> She brings us into the nursery, and we're given a sneak peek at our future companion in the game. And I get the feeling that she didn't know what was in the box. At this point, we gain control of the character. And I really did feel like a toddler moving around. The controls are great. And then we're taken through a tutorial of the game mechanics and controls. And this is always the best way to do it, to actually just integrate it into the story. So we can crawl around, when you crawl you're faster, you can climb on things, you can walk, uh, and you can even run. Then we're introduced to Teddy. You might be just a little bit creeped out by Teddy at first, but you'll come to realize that he's a good companion to have. My name is Teddy. Nice to meet you. Hey, what's your name? Turn around and cover your eyes. They put a lot of thought into all the controls, including how you go into the uh, options menu pretty clever. Obviously you're pretty small, so you're going to be pulling out drawers and, and pushing chairs around in order to get up to higher things. We need some place very dark. The creepiness begins, but mostly just to introduce you to yet another How mechanic. Your closet. It has to be darker. Shut the doors completely. Good. This will do nicely. Going into this blind, I'm not going to lie, this was a, a really uncomfortable part. Hope there are no monsters in here. If you ever feel scared in a dark place like this, you can hug me tightly. You might feel a little bit safer. So it's just a build-up tension, and Teddy is your flashlight. <laughs> You've got to stop hiding from mommy. Having played all the way through this, I can I definitely see all the clues time. that the game is dropping in this and intro. Now it's time for bed. Then she beds us down, and the scary stuff starts. Every little boy and girl are sleeping now, all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Teddy?
Where are you going, Teddy? It's time to leave the crib, y'all. Then we're off on our own. Maybe learning one or two minor things here and there, but for the most part, it's just you and your wits from this point on out. And you start using those skills you picked up in the nursery. I really love how the game puts you at a disadvantage. I was instinctively looking for places that I might be able to hide if something happened. Thank you. Something's not right. We need to find your mother. When you pick up Teddy here, you'll have him with you for the rest of the game. Along the way, keep your eyes open for these little scribbles. They're your save points. The game definitely provides some good scares throughout. I definitely wanted to scramble to crawl under stuff, and I like how the game made it so that you could. The game is very much so wrapped in tension and mystery. Um, we go looking for Mom. She has Harry Potter glasses. Not sure why, but she's not there. And then we set out to solve a mystery, but things are pretty jacked up, Scoob. This isn't funny, Mom! When you start to get into the meat of the game, it takes on a real metaphorical tone as though we're dreaming, or perhaps sleepwalking. But we are definitely venturing into metaphor. Ooh, what is this? <laughs> Can you see your reflection? It's her, but it, it seems more like... A memory? Nope, it's a mommery. <laughs> yeah, mommery, not ma not mammary. Mommery. Time to jump down the tuba of regret. This might be what Mario sees, by the way. Are you all right? Yep, just a little confused. I don't know, I was kind of hoping you'd tell me, sentient teddy bear. A playhouse? What's that doing here? The playhouse serves as your hub, and you'll be coming back to it several times in the game as you collect items. Each item that you bring back to the playhouse unlocks a new area. I don't want to spoil anything, but there are monsters ahead and pitfalls, and your character can die. In conclusion, it's a beautiful and well-made game. There are a lot of good scares, too. But the ending is definitely emotional and unpleasant. And because of that, I think this is just a one-time playthrough for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.